Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So I'm, I'm really, really thrilled about uh, the, the topic today. So the topic today is the difference between your your egoic orientation and, and your creative self. And it, it's really interesting to think about this is there's a part of you, an aspect of you that's here to be a creator. And then there's another part of you that's here to play a sort of a, a different game. And if you've ever felt in life that there's an aspect or a part of you that seems to not be wanting to, to create what it is that you love, then today's session is, is going to be very, very, very valuable uh, for you. For me, I spent most of my life living out the egoic orientation, where every single thing that I was trying to create was actually driven by a sense of completion, uh, a sense of trying to complete myself because I felt incomplete. So think about this, and, and this is the premise. Someone type this in for me, please. The egoic orientation is driven from incompleteness. The egoic orientation is driven from incompleteness. And, and because it's driven from incompleteness, you can never have whatever the egoic orientation puts at its focus. So, so a real quick, uh, a quick explanation is if your current reality, you feel not enough, and you're driven by this, uh, this idea that you're not enough, so you go to create, let's say, money or love or something. And if you were to get that, you would feel enough. OK, the reason why, as we all know, that you'll never be able to have that is because your identity will never accept something that is in opposition to it. The not enough identity will never accept you having this because then you'd have to accept that you're enough. Does that make sense, everyone? And so the structure never works. And I think most of us know this, so I don't want to go more into that. I want to, I want to kind of expand on it today. Okay. I lived this. I lived this for you know 30 years. I, I went, I went at something to complete a, a thing that I felt, well, if I could just have that, then I would be something else. It would complete me. And I would, I would be able to get it or touch it for a while. But then my identity would find a way so I couldn't, I wouldn't have it anymore and, uh, and push it even further. So then I could chase it again and push it and chase it again. So William White Cloud has a really nice model for this. And so, so credit where credit's due, this is, uh, this is William's drawing. So, so William talks about uh, you have your current reality here and then you have your vision but then you also have uh, another thing that's going on. And, and he was the first one that used the word egoic agenda. And the egoic agenda isn't actually the vision, okay? The, the vision is a, is a vision of a life you love, the what you really would love to create. And then you have your egoic agenda. So, so if you put it in perspective of me, I actually had a vision of creating a world changing business and something that was amazing. But my egoic agenda was actually trying to prove that I was enough. Does that make sense? It was like they were, they were actually different and they would look similar, but they're actually different. Like many people have a vision of having a happy life, but then they also have an egoic agenda. And, and so, so William, and by the way, William is one of my great mentors. And I, I really think all of you should read his book, the magician's way. It's uh it's a good one. So I thought I'd bring this out because I'm, I'm teaching some of his content today. So, so he said here, this is creative, creative tension. And this here is psychological tension. And, and, and he said to me, he said, in life, you're going to have two tensions. You're going to have one tension about something you want to create. And remember, we want to create what we love. For no other reason. And then we're going to have a psychological tension that's driven from a sense that we're incomplete. And if we could just have that, we would be complete. Does that make sense, everyone? So I want to talk about this. So an egoic agenda is driven from a sense of incompleteness. But where does this sense of incompleteness come from? 
And, and once you can understand it, it's like when you're looking, you, 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 you pour light onto like a vampire, it, it kind of vanishes. It, when you see it and you look at it, it's, its power dissolves. So every single one of us has an egoic agenda and every single one of us should have a, a creative vision. Whichever one you give the power is what will manifest. Whatever one you give the power is, is what will manifest. If you give your sense of incompleteness and trying to resolve your incompleteness, the power, well, then what will manifest is you trying to chase something that you never can have because it's in direct uh, conflict or violation of that which you are. But if you shift up into a creative vision, realizing that you already are bigger than anything, then you can be in a creative tension and a creative structure. And this here is probably the most, or some of the most important things that you can understand. So, so how does it come to be that we have an egoic agenda uh, and a sense that we're incomplete? And, and can I just ask while I'm on this, uh, how many of you are starting to feel like, yeah, this is really important. I, I have seen myself have an egoic agenda. And some days I am pulled by that egoic agenda. I'm pulled by I'm not enough or I'm not worthy or I'm not this. And then I'm going to go try to complete that. And, and we've got to realize that that's, that's not being creative. That's being problem solving. That's looking at ourselves as, as broken and needing to be fixed. And so anyway, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool to understand this. So we all start out. As a, as a pure creative spirit. And who knows really how it happens, uh, but, but we enter our, uh, you know, our, our self-conscious identity, our ego or our self-conscious. And basically we're born, we become a human and we, we kind of fall from this creative essence, creative spirit, and then we're, we're, we're born and we, we go, hey, this is your name. So hi, I'm Chris and this is Ben and this is James and this is John and this is, and you're this and you're not that anymore. Does that make sense? You realize, hey, I'm now born into something. And what William says is that the ego seeks validation. It seeks validation. It seeks to know how the world is seeks to know how how is the world you know am i good enough am i this am i that like what am i seeks valid seeks to be validated and it's a very important thing so it seeks to be validated and 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 where there is unmet validation so so maybe you have an absent father or maybe you have a mother who who you know is very hard to please and so you, you make up how the world is where you can't get validated. You're not seen. Now, we all know in this work that there are six core uh, unmet um, uh, wounds or, or uh, you know, unmet places of validation or beliefs. OK, so as we're seeking validation, there is a place that we don't seek the we don't receive the validation in the way that we desire. And, and that's painful. Thanks, Andrew. I'm going to go into it, but but that's painful. And so what happens is, is as we seek validation, there is unmet validation. Now that's because every single one of us, uh, <laughs> every single one of us, when we fell from a creative consciousness into a human form. It, we, we went from this place where we have it all to where we're an individual. And by becoming an individual, there, there were things that we weren't able to, to receive anymore. So we didn't just get everything. For example, we had to go and get food and get water and get shelter. And the way that we got it was, was basically we had, well, most of it, we had parents or caregivers that were there to validate and to give that for us. And then we realized that they were very important. We had to make sure that we received their love, their attention, their praise. And here's what we realized. We realized there was a way to get more of what we want. There was a way to lose it. Think about that for a second. We all figured out there was a way to get more of what we want and a way to lose it. We also found out there was a way to get what we don't want and also to avoid what we don't want. So do you see how we start figuring that out, everyone? We start figuring out, right, like that, you know, there's 
there, there's there's this way it is. If I do this, then I'm, this is what I'm going to get. If I do this, then oh, I might get that. And so we we kind of work out how the world is. So we decide, hey, you know, the the world is the world is this way. This is this is how it is. If I do this, I get praise. If I do this, I get scolded. If I do this, I avoid getting scolded. If I do do this and I don't get the praise or, or, or the attention or the love or the care or whatever it is that we're looking to seek. Now, there are six core ways that we, we don't get validated, six core wounds. So, so what we do is we make up what this means. Make up what it means. We make it up. We make it up. We make it up. We say it to so what does this mean? What does this mean? We make it up. So if we're not validated in say some, uh, in say we're not, maybe we, we're not able to be as athletic as we might like to be. We might make up, well, this means I'm not good enough. If when we do something good, we get praised, if we do something and we get told off, we might make up that we're not worthy ourselves. We're only worthy if we do good. Now, there are six of these that we make up. So we might make up, we might feel that we're, we're abandoned. Like if we move countries at a young age or maybe are adopted, we might make up that that means we don't belong here. That's the third one. The fourth one is not being perfect. So you know, when maybe we're criticized, maybe we're criticized and we go, well, okay, well, clearly then I'll make up that I'm not perfect because I'm getting criticized. Or maybe uh, I'm never seen. No one seems to see me. So I'm insignificant. And the last one is capability is we, we fail at something. Instead of realizing that it's a learning process, we realize, well, I'm incapable. So there are six, um, Andrea typed them in, um, um, for me, and they're all made up. They're all made up, and, and the six of them are: I'm not good enough, I'm unworthy, uh, incomplete, don't belong, uh, not capable, and whatever the other one, insignificant. There is six, and maybe another coach would would quickly type them in. Um, they're in the book as well. They're in the book as well. And so, what happens is is because of because of this. Um, I guess because of this sort of fall from grace and then this making up how it is, we actually seek to resolve that. So we have this and we make up what it is and that becomes our beliefs. Where's my little thing? Right. And then our goal in life becomes our orientation, orientated, to solve our belief. So the belief here is one of the six. So we become orientated to solve that belief. Thanks, Maria. Maria's typed them in perfectly. And so instead of being orientated to create a life that we love, we actually become orientated to solve that belief that we made up. Now, just think about it. It's very interesting. Most people in life aren't going for what they love. Is it true? They're not going and creating what they love. Most people are trying to resolve a way they feel incomplete to, to finally complete themselves. And they never will. Because if they were finally able to complete themselves, then who would I be? If I was finally, if I was able to do that, who would I be? So use me as an example. If I was finally able to, to you know, I'm not good enough. I'm going to become good enough, uh, and people are going to, I'm going to, everyone will see me as good enough. But then, who would I be? Does that make sense? Then, who would I be? And, and Buddha said it best. He said the last thing that a human being will give up is its suffering, because without its suffering, then then they wouldn't know who they are. 
Hmm. Now, it's interesting to think about this, isn't it? It's interesting to look at most people as actually a, a child with unmet validation trying to complete themselves through a relationship. Hey, this person will complete me. And then the person leaves and they're de devastated. You know, if only I could have this body, then I'd be perfect. And then I could have the love of my life. If only I could have more money, then the world would respect me. If only I could have. So you always know you're coming from a sense of incompleteness when something else is going to make you and your life better. And what's interesting is that because of our unconscious ability to prove its beliefs true, we keep finding the same thing because our unconscious doesn't want to let go of what it believes is true. So the deepest essence is, there, is this belief that the world is like this. And I'm part of the world and my part in the world is not good enough. And I've got to find a way to solve that. And I've got to find a way to finally be worthy. The I'm not worthy um, wound is a very interesting wound. This, the, the person, I, I always, I see them a lot in these courses because they've spent a lot of time trying to become worthy. You know, they want to be worthy. So they'll do all this good stuff. They'll do all this good. And then they'll wonder why they haven't got the money back. They say, "But I've been, I've been so good." And, and you, and you actually think about what they're trying to say. They're trying to say, "Well, when I was a child, I did good, and I got handed a treat or a sweet, or got to stay up late." And they're still kind of trying to do that. Hey, oh, she's a good girl, so you get to do what you want. He's bad, so he doesn't. And so they got this. Or, or what about the idea of that they're still trying to perfect themselves? If I could finally, if I could finally be that perfect, that Barbie doll. If I look that perfect, if I could be that. Then I could have what I want. If I could finally be perfect, if I could be disciplined. The perfect person is always wanting to be disciplined. They're always, a lot of times they're short-sighted because they're just like, it's got to be like this, control. And, they're, and everything's about perfecting themselves. So, so here's how it works, right? And it's, it's interesting. So you become orientated to solve the belief. And the question that you ask really, okay, is that as you're orientated with it, as you, as you ask yourself, okay, so this is true. This is true. You say, this is true. And so you, the question that your unconscious asks is how do I cope? It doesn't question whether the belief is true or not. Right? It says, so this is how it is. So how do I cope with this? How do I cope with this? So I'm not good enough. So I'm going to go try to achieve lots. Or I'm not worthy. So I'm going to try to go and be good. Does that make sense? How do I cope? It's very important to, to, to do that. So... And, and, and that question of how I cope, well, that creates an action. And that action creates a reality. And then that reality reinforces the belief and the orientation. Does that make sense, everyone? And so you, you, you're always going to find it. And so what's really fascinating to me is watching so many, so many super talented people not create a life they love because the psychological tension of their unconscious beliefs is so strong. And instead of going for what they love, instead of taking the action and going for what they love, they're off doing other things, not doing anything, making up stories why they can't have it, finding ways to not have it. So here's my question to, to everyone on here. And it was, it was, I had a really nice conversation with a really close friend of mine. And it was so awesome just to, just to, to acknowledge this. 
how many of you right now have choices on your list, like you have choices that you're not actually going for? Like you have a choice and you haven't moved towards it at all. Okay, like let's be honest, how many of us have those? Like you've written a choice or a goal or an end result. And if you actually are honest, you're not engaged in it. You're actually not engaged in it. And it's all right. It's all right. I, I would suggest 95% of us uh, on here have at least one choice we've written down that we've written down because we just think it should be there. And we're not engaged in it. Let me know. Give me a yes, just so that everyone who is giving a yes, if you have it, it's, it's, I'm not trying to have you make it up. I just want everyone to know that most of us will have this. Okay. So the question you must ask yourself is, by not going for that choice, by writing that choice down and not going for it, what am I teaching my unconscious is true? Very good, Mark. Very good. And what benefit do you have of writing a choice down and then not going for it? I tell you, I tell you the answer is by writing a choice down and not going for it, you're living in a uh, in a worldview that that there's something you've got to complete about yourself before you can have it. True, by, by writing something down, I choose this and just having it as a wish and not actively going for it. You're, the only reason you're doing that is so that this belief stays true, that you're not, you're not, there's something fucked up about you and you can't have it. Isn't that interesting? Because the egoic agenda, the egoic agenda, right back to the beginning, the egoic agenda is different to the vision. The egoic agenda is to prove to you that you are broken, that you are incomplete, that you are powerless. Isn't it? Isn't it true? The egoic's agenda is to prove to you that you're just a little baby and you can't have it the way you want it. I can't have I can't have it because. And if you boil down what's in that because, you will find one of those six. I can't have it because, and because, 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 because everything's not perfect. It's not exactly how I want it. It's got to be, I can only have it if it's this. It's, and if it's not this, I'm not going for it. <laughs> I'm going to get a text message and told off in a second. But it's just true. Or I'm not going to go for it because, because then I would be good enough. Hey. Or if I actually went for it, I would be significant. Isn't it interesting? Hey, isn't it interesting? The egoic agenda is so strong with us there and it has an agenda and it has an agenda that it wants to to have something so isn't it big hey isn't it big the egoic agenda is completely different to the life you love and it's there it's literally there to prove that it that it's right it's there to prove that what you believed when you were a two or a three-year-old is right, isn't it? 
because it's what's happened here. The egoic agenda is just trying to prove that you know how the world is. And so it wants to prove how the world is. And so it decides, well, the world is, is the way it is. That's my belief, one of those six. And so I'm going to take action, or in our case, inaction. So we've got a goal. I choose this. And I, I don't actually engage in creating it, which then creates a reality of I can't have what I want. So then it reinforces it. Do you see that? And so then it, then it looks true. So how do we fix it? That's the big question. How do we fix it? So, who's enjoying today's session, by the way? I'm bloody enjoying it. I needed this session. I needed this session. The whole structure starts from a unmet validation of your completeness. The whole structure is created from an unmet validation of your completeness. As a child, you went for validation from someone else, a mother, a father, a caregiver, whatever. And you look for validation outside of yourself. So to collapse this is you must be complete now. You must be whole now. Being whole now is the goal now. You must validate yourself. The egoic agenda is created, like I said, right from the start. It's driven from a feeling of incompleteness. If you had no feeling of incompleteness, the egoic agenda has nothing it's trying to complete. Many of us want to go out there and, and create. And that's what we should all do. Yet, if you're out there creating and going, but you're not whole and complete, your egoic agenda is going to, to grab you and take you on a ride, hey? Take you on a ride. Take you and you're going you're gonna to be over here not taking action or writing down things you can't have or getting into all sorts of trouble to prove your, uh, your unmet validation is true. It'll take you away. And the key is to come back and realize that right now you got everything. And when you when you when we do that, we're going to talk about it. We're going to go into it today. Is is when you when you become completely whole, complete, without needing anything else, then you can just be creative. See, make sense. When when you can live in that top structure and be creative, it's because there's no sense of incompleteness driving you to complete yourself. This is the key. It's the key to the wizard's gate. It really is. The goal is to be complete now. 
Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.